Recently, there was an announcement that several U.S. dairy companies were being certified by the Fair Trade Organization. I was surprised by this because I had thought that the Fair Trade label was only for products imported from developing countries, coffee or chocolate, for example. And the Fair Trade label was to show that those growers might be provided with a bit more income. With that announcement in mind, I'm pleased that our guest today is from the Fair Trade Organization itself. Molly Rinaldo is Partnership Manager for Fair Trade USA. Molly, welcome to Dairy Business Update. Thank you. Before we talk about the dairy announcement, uh, just give us an overview of the Fair Trade Organization and the work that it does. Absolutely. So you're not wrong. Fair Trade USA was created in 1998 for being able to build a bridge between the market and the producing communities themselves. And we were created for crop production, coffee, cocoa, sugar, those kind of things in the developing world. Um, but over the last 22 years, we've expanded. We currently certify more than 250 commodities. We work in 45 countries, um, but we've continued to innovate to see how we can bring more producing communities into the fold, whether that's creating a factory standard. So now we can certify factories making apparel and home goods or fishers that are doing um, capture fishery seafood production. And about a handful of years, we realized why are we ignoring our backyard? There's just as many opportunities to impact producing communities here in the global north. Um, and we entered into produce and, and that now led us into dairy. So it's been a long journey, but we're happy to say that now 22, 23 years later, we work with almost a million farmers and workers truly throughout all the four corners of the world. Well, uh, thank you for that background. Well, tell us a little bit more about the announcement that you just made about working with Chobani, uh, obviously the famous Greek yogurt maker, uh, and uh, Cayuga Marketing back in New York and, and Dairy Farmers of America. Yeah, so a couple of years ago, we were looking for where we wanted to innovate and Chobani came to us as we, these rumblings kind of started and said, you know, we have an internal program. We're really looking for how we can fulfill this pillar of protecting the labor portion of our supply chain. Um, and would you guys be interested in doing it? Can Fair Trade even do that? And we kind of looked at each other and said, we're not really sure, but let's see. Let's see if we our model can be applicable here. So we entered into a full exploration process um, and identified that we could use standards that we already had. We would have to um, go through a large revision process because they're created for crop production and this is completely different and with its own unique challenges. And we revamped our standard. We worked with Chobani to say, okay, who are you buying from? Um, and then we approached the different co-ops and fair trade is 100% voluntary. So just because a brand says they want to be fair trade certified does not mean that that's a f enforcement on a co-op or on a farm, um, whether direct or cooperative structure. So we had to go to the co-ops and say, this is our program. Here's the intentions behind it. It's new. We want to build it with you because you guys are the experts you know what the challenges are. Let us apply our experience with social um, social welfare to um, apply that. And thankfully, Dairy Farmers of America and Cayuga both jumped on and said they'd be open. And so that was the first hurdle. And then the next hurdle was saying, okay, this is the volume of milk we want to certify right here now at the outset with plans to develop. Can you help us find farms who would be willing to join this program and help us build this brand new thing? and fulfill those load requirements. And so that led us down to making partnerships with farms. Um, totally unique having to figure out how to certify a portion of a co-op and not require an entire cooperative um, to become certified. And it was met with its own challenges. I think dairy, um, we tend to forget, especially in the social welfare space that um, we tend to think like we know how what impact can come through fair trade. We know the impact of premium and a standard being there both for giving producers credit for the work that they're already doing, but also saying, let's raise the bar a little bit higher. Um, but, you know, we were going into an industry that has unfortunately been really taken advantage in sometimes for being really great people. And sometimes that comes back to bite them. And so 
it, there was a bit of fear. There was a bit of trepidation and there was a lot of investment of time into relationship building um, to try and confirm that we were really trying to help and that not only were we trying to come in and help, but we knew we couldn't do it without the industry telling us what needed to be addressed. So it was a big conversation. Well, of course, part of that, an important part of that is is the financial arrangements uh, and what the fair trade uh, label means, but how those monies flow back to the uh, producers and, and even their employees. Just give us a little picture of how that works in the real world. Yeah, so in any fair trade supply chain, um, when a buyer purchases that fair trade certified ingredient, they pay a premium. Um, and it's a set amount of money per volume. It's different in every supply chain. And fair trade works really hard to make sure it's, a mo it's an amount of money that's impactful to the producing community, but it's something the market can bear at the same time. Um, and what happens is once that's paid, it flows directly into a bank account that is owned and operated by the producers that created that product. Now in dairy, it's a little unique. In other supply chains, it's 100% of that premium flows in and then those farmers and workers that created it get to democratically decide how they want to reinvest that into the needs they see in their community. Um, fair trade doesn't decide, the buyer doesn't decide, the cooperative doesn't decide, it's entirely up to them. Um, with dairy though, we understood that this is a very technologically advanced, in intensive, intensive industry, and it could be very expensive um, from the outset of trying to come into compliance with certain elements of the fair trade standard. And to support that, knowing that dairy exists on razor thin margins, um, we actually said, okay, that normal premium fund is gonna be unique for dairy. We're gonna take one third of that, and that goes into a compliance support fund so that farmers have money coming in to reinvest in the needs that they see on farms. Um, and then the other two thirds still exists as normal premium does so that farmers and workers can invest in whatever community projects that is, whether that's subsidizing insurance premiums or building a community soccer field because that's something that they want. You know, it's completely up to them, whatever they see is the biggest impact. And I think you've told us that the premium is 45 cents per hundred weight of milk uh, purchase for the fair trade products. Yes, so 15 cents for every hundred weight goes into that compliance support fund, 30 cents goes into the community development premiums. What a project, dairy farmers actually being asked to uh, live up to a certain standard and getting compensated for it. Yeah, we try to make sure that it's not just a benefit to the market, but obviously a, a benefit to the people we really wanna support. Well, that's uh, very intriguing and we appreciate your background. Well, tell us uh, now that you're into the dairy space, uh, are, you, are you receiving more inquiries? Uh, do you expect there'll be more uh, dairy companies, co-ops, uh, producers uh, being interested in the fair trade program? Yeah, since we released into the media and kind of shared out that we had created this first of its kind standard, uh, the conversations have definitely been sparked. Uh, we were already talking to some brands, some retailers about how this could apply in their supply chains and be beneficial. Um, those have ticked up in urgency, which is exciting. Um, it's also important to note that fair trade certification is a market-based approach. So we wouldn't go to a co-op and say, hey, do you want to be fair trade certified? we want to make sure that there's a buyer that's guaranteed to buy, pay premium for that so that we don't have a farm go through all that work without that guarantee of that bonus so it really starts with getting the commitment there and then relationship building backwards so i'm excited about what we'll see coming out in the future of um, who might be joining whether that's a retailer looking for private labeling opportunities or food service opportunities um, or a national brand and it's it's exciting that we certify at raw milk, so it's open to any dairy byproduct that can be created from raw milk, um, and it's open to any kind of supply chain, cooperative, direct purchasing, organic, conventional, whatever's out there. And if there is an entity interested in uh, reaching out to you, how do, how do they reach you? And are you the right person to reach? Yes. Yeah. So uh, people can reach out to me at Fair Trade USA and um, shoot me an email, M. Ronaldo, and I will start walking through. And we really take a first step by identifying what are your market goals 
and why do you want to do fair trade and and what are we looking at to certify for you and then because we're brand new we certify all the supply chains it's not saying hey we have this grouping of people who's already certified let's try and move your your production that's we know now a very ridiculous thing to ask of dairy um and so we would work with you and say okay introduce us to the next person in your supply chain let's talk about them see if they're on board and then the next step back um and then we work through with those farms and introduce them to our standard and as long as they want to be a part of the fair trade program we have an entire team that sits down and says okay here's your gaps with the standard let's create a plan of how you come into compliance you do a first audit and as soon as you get approved through that audit you are good to sell on fair trade terms to that buyer that proposed you or anyone else you're selling to you are then permitted to sell on fair trade terms so um that whole process takes about six to nine months but it's it's an exciting opportunity to bring people in well, we appreciate you taking time to tell us about that. We've been speaking with Molly Ronaldo of Fairtrade USA. Uh, thanks, thanks so much, Molly, for being with us. Thank you. I'm Joel Hastings for Dairy Business Update at dairybusiness.com.